Hi there. In this lecture, Bobby Fischer is playing against Ruben Chocron in the 1959 Mar de Plata tournament, round 7. So e4 from Fischer, we see e5. Knight f3, knight c6. We have a Royal Lopez, a6, bishop a4, knight f6. So this is all tried and tested moves, which have been seen literally millions of times before. This is closed Royal Lopez territory. And I'll take you to the point of great interest here. Of the details, details, we see knight h2, knight f3 to h2, and we see rook d8, and now queen f3, bishop e6. And there's an interesting idea that Fisher plays here. Can you guess? If I give you five seconds to pause the video. Okay. Knight g4. Yeah, he's putting pressure on the f6 square. And he encourages knight takes and he takes with the pawn so this opens up this potentially dangerous file and there's another point here of the queen c6 a tactical point can you see a very interesting tactical move opportunity here if i give you five seconds to pull the video here okay g5 so this vacates g4 so sometimes maybe knight g4 will be useful and it seems as though, well, hold on, the g-pawn's hanging. Yeah, black actually ignored this, which is one of the strongest moves. Bishop takes is possible, knight e5, and black has different options here. If bishop takes, then white is just clearly better after bishop takes, because it hits the rook. This is just uh, winning material. If rook takes, this is an interesting exchange to that option, but white should be better after bishop e4. Bishop takes c1 here is interesting, check, and in this position, in fact, uh, rook a takes c1 might be one of the better moves, not taking the rook, and white should end up slightly better here. So yeah, very interesting tactical uh, possibilities. If taking the rook, black just plays bishop f4 and it's just equal. So it's interesting lines which could occur off this g5 but it was sidestepped and then we have knight g4 which officially protects the pawn and um, we have bishop takes g4 so queen takes white has achieved a light square bishop without a counterpart but at the moment it seems very locked in can that bishop on c2 really do damage later we see knight b6 g3 which gives the idea that king g2 and rook h1 sometimes and in fact the king goes to g2 and we have rook h1, very nice, h-file kind of dynamic going on here, knight f6, f8, pardon me, b4, this is interesting, play on the queen side now, and it's encouraging this bishop to be opened up with c takes, bishop takes, that looks at f7, it starts to look and feel very dangerous, black didn't want anything to do with that, and played queen e6, we have queen e2, a5, and now taking, and it seems as though Fish is really interested in opening up some lines and plays a4 here, offering c3 here, rook a8. If queen takes c3 here, uh, from a technical point of view, black can use d4 to try and equalize. It should be about equal this position. But anyway, rook a8 was chosen. We have a takes, queen takes, rook fb1. And now a tempo gainer, rook b6. You might think, well, what is the exact point there on rook b6? Okay, uh, well, queen c7 was played. If queen takes, then actually strongest is rook takes to get the rook on the 7th with a massive bind in this position. This is a big bind. White's got a very, very big advantage. That knight is kind of suppressed. This is why it's controlling the position. That's actually stronger than taking the queen off for two rooks, as you as you might suspect. Uh, okay, but anyway, after rook b6, we see queen c7, and now rook b a6, so white is, Fisher is taking control of the a file, and a7 is useful. Queen g4, knight e6. So it seems as though the knight is springing into life. Bishop a4, the, the bishop sees some light, and supports rook c6. We see queen d Eight. Actually, more solid here was actually queen d7. For example, this position, 
check there's king f3 to protect the queen against that tactic but even so it's about equal but in the game we see rook d8 guess what fisher plays here which is really an amazing move star move if i give you five seconds to pause the video okay he plays rook takes e6 and he factors in the, the pin move but we're going to get to that in a moment what if black took black actually pinned but if the rook is taken there's a lot of compensation for the exchange of the queen takes e6 check taking out one of the opponent's center pawns opens up central squares for massively central pieces but king's safety is also an issue here after king f7 bishop d4 beautiful central piece and then this bishop can also take control of the center so black central control kind of wiped out these bishops are enormous this is just a winning position for white and also this past the e-pawn as well it's just a huge position so shock on in shock <laughs> you get the jokes in for free on this course play queen c8 pinning here but can you see the refutation now of this move queen c8 put your tactical hat on prioritize forcing moves what forcing moves you think fisher played here it, it might be a forcing move okay if i give you five cents to pause the video what would you play here which ended the game okay bishop d7 yep it's putting the queen where it's an unprotected status after the queen to, if the queen did take black actually resigned if the queen did take then the point is rook takes g6 taking off that unprotected piece yes unprotected pieces creating unprotected pieces though backfire when you try and win them you can win them tactically like that not in this position so yeah very very interesting game this bishop really came alive if we track the bishop i think the philosophical point is this royal Lopez bishop is one of the points why people play this all these moves without thinking but later this c2 bishop can be really dangerous fisher's little novelty in this particular game actually uh tries to get i mean it does get the bishop without a counterpart but it's still locked in so we've got the royal pairs bishop without a counterpart here special case but how to actually uh proceed well the h file dynamic was interesting and then this activity on the queen side to try and open up the bishop is very dangerous for black potentially so interesting possibilities of you know rook h6 doubling and rooks if black got too greedy perhaps on taking there's a lot of interesting tactical possibilities uh but it was opened up anyway well it did end up uh, offering c3 it's still not taken black wasn't trying to be too greedy that's the interesting thing and could have just yeah uh, slipped up allowing an exchange sacrifice maybe that is the takeaway point be careful if you allow exchange sacrifices which kind of wipe out potentially your central control yeah it does it does kind of wipe out the central control of the position uh in as it was played after rook c6 this one which uh, has the weakness of the last move of not protecting e5 so that pawn if that pawn this is a very important pawn if it's taken and it gives this d4 square for white that's a huge huge bishop on d4 so this is a very interesting i think takeaway point about winning central control through an exchange sacrifice and it has all sorts of rippling king safety implications and winning more material so yeah very interesting to consider this kind of exchange sack in our own games i think so i think that's a key takeaway point about the exchange set central control the early preparation with g5 is also very interesting home cook preparation i believe so yeah a fantastic game huge accuracy if you put this through the engines you know fisher's accuracy shot up here hardly one uh, maybe just one question win accuracy from the latest technology we have at the time of this recording so uh, i'm very marked difference from the two earlier rounds which are very strange for fisher here no major mistake at all from white's play flawless game almost yep amazing stuff okay thanks so much hi guys if you enjoyed this video lecture 
You might want to get more at my course, Kings Crusher TV slash Bobby Fisher, which I had a blast creating over 25 hours of video content. I tried to get the most instructive juice out of every single game covered and picking the most important games from this period. I had an absolute blast creating it, and I think you will have an absolute blast checking it out. And it's at a big discount code with this link. You know, Kings Crusher TV slash Bobby Fisher has the discount code. So I hope you do check that out. Thanks very much.